sto riprovando ok we are live now so i'll leave you the space mm -hmm. On the on the event page. Okay. Yeah, I, I am copying the link. Nice. Still wait twenty seconds. Yeah. Ecco I don't qua. get allora. it. Siamo. Okay, the link should be now on the event on the event of the page. Okay, I think it's okay now. We are live. Good yeah. evening, everybody. Welcome to this new episode of DMTV and thanks for joining us also today. Let me say that I have the enormous honor of introducing our tonight's guest. He is a dramaturg, he is a writer, a director, an activist. Yes. All these and a friend as well. Let me a kind welcome to Milora. Is a writer. Welcome in DMTV. Are you there, Milo? Could you yes, hear me? Yes, 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 I'm there. I'm there. I hear you. Yes. Milo? Yes, I'm here. You hear me? We oui. Yeah, you hear me, Patricia? Good. Where, where are you now? And uh, I, I just welcome you. I don't know if you could hear me. And um, where are you now? Where did you spend your lockdown period? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, in Germany, in Berlin, um, I'm, I'm rehearsing. I started rehearsing today. No, two days ago on Monday. So I was in uh, Cologne before for some weeks with my family. And uh, last Sunday, I, I, I went to Berlin to start rehearsing as planned. So things are slowly starting again now. Good. <laughs> let, me, let me say that this online uh, talking wants to be an informal and interactive conversation uh, where uh, I hope everybody, you all feel free to jump in the conversation by sending us messages and uh, I promise I will leave time for all of them. So please don't hesitate to send questions to, to Milo uh, because that's the, the idea of this exchange of free thoughts and idea and reflection. And um, as I was saying, uh, would be a journey inside the the man, the artist, and the activist. That's why I chose the title uh, "Inside Man," which is a quote by one of Spike Lee movie. And so let's start with a game in order to break the ice. I'm going to not think too much on them. Just answer. And uh, let's start with the first one um, in this particular uh, historical uh, moment. What do you hate and love most? Sorry, it was it was a bit interrupted. What I what I hate most? What you love or hate most in this particular historical moment? Okay, um, I love most uh, the lockdown, the stop of everything, uh, that you don't know if your projects will really happen. So kind of this uh, hiatus of, uh, of everything, so that you are not kind of running behind uh, your projects, but you are kind of rethinking all projects you, you, you made before. And uh, I had a lot of time to to write. I had a lot of time to rethink how I do uh, theater and what I did before. Because actually, when you're just into it, you can't reflect on it. So it's, it's a moment of reflection. 
I think this is this is uh, this Absolutely is. Absolutely uh, agree. Yeah, <laughs> this is what I love, um, and what I hate, what I feel now, um, um, that it's already over. I feel now that it's already kind of getting back to the so-called normal, which is strange because our so-called neoliberal normal is completely perverse and apocalyptic. So we are going back to the apocalypse. And I think that a lot of people even think that we lost some distance to the apocalypse. We even have to run faster. Now. So I think the whole neoliberalistic system is preparing itself to take back even strong. So I think it's really the moment of 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 saying no and of, of activism at this at this very moment in history, because for me this whole um, Corona crisis is kind of a, yeah I mean even on a higher level a moment of reflection in the sense that you should like. Um, moments to stop it to rethink it to have a to, 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 to search for alternatives so for me it's kind of a general rehearsal of of uh, of the big change that has to come it, totally. the transmission work ah, okay yeah you totally no no please go you totally you totally right um give me three words that best describe so the human condition today? What do you think the more appropriate words for describing that? To, uh, to describe what's, what's happening now? The, the, the human condition today. Um, I, 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 um, I, I, I was, in the last weeks, I was starting to read a lot. Uh, because I had some time and I was just when when everything happened I was in Brazil doing uh, a tragedy Antigone uh, together with uh, people from the landless movement with uh, with activists indigenous activists and the interesting things in these tragedies uh, that they are tragic so to say that they show the antagonisms we are in and I think we are now our civilization or humanity or humankind or however you want to to call it we are in a in a in a in a tragic moment in a moment of decision you could you could uh, you could call it so in a moment that we finally understood and i think everybody understood that we can't fix it anymore and we shouldn't fix it anymore but that there is a need to change and i think this is something we really understood now I think this is the, the the moment that we have to feel and we have to connect with the with the with the tragic quality of this time. So we have really to think this time now. I think this is the this is the moment we are in. I think sometimes in human history there's a kind of a stop. There are some you could call it empty weeks, weeks when you have time to reflect. And I think that's that's the that's the moment to describe where we are in. And as I said, the problem is that we are already stepping out, and it already seems that we didn't learn anything. I mean, the civilization. I think everybody of us learned a lot, but we don't know how to collectivize this knowledge, and we don't know how to translate it in in uh, in, in 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 action. And I think these are the next steps we have to we have to take together as civil society. Yes, um, in fact, moving, uh, moving forward uh, um, and looking at your last uh, works and your last projects, uh, we can say that they have been always strictly connected to political involvement as civil society. Now, what I would like to ask you is, uh, looking at all these um, pandemic crises, uh, what uh, could be um, the role of art? How art can play uh, a different and maybe more significant role in this uh, in this situation? I mean, we are just um, getting off from sanitary emergency, but we are approaching, of course, the economic and, in my opinion, the social one. 
which is more complicated. Uh, so everything, we all agree that, of course, uh, nothing can be the same, for sure. Uh, I, in my opinion, we can go back. But uh, what art can do right now? I think art is a is a is a is a space of of, of symbol, symbolic action. So I think what you can do in art is kind of having uh, or creating possibilities of connect, of think together, and of, for example, having unforeseeable collectives. For example, what for me always was the, the next step for art. I call it global realism. So how to have an art that describes and even can change the way globalization is working. For example, we said at one moment, we said, okay, we have a global economy, but we don't have a global econo economic law. So that's a problem that we have, for example, Swiss uh, raw material enterprises being in the Eastern Congo. But if you are pushed from your enterprise as a Congolese citizen, you can't appeal to a Congolese uh, tribunal, and you can appeal to a European tribunal. There is no tribunal, no law. So we created the so-called Congo Tribunal to uh, create a symbolic institution that should exist in the real world. So art can create new realities, to put it very uh, simply, you know? So I think this is one thing art can do. Another thing art can do is to connect knowledge with emotions, to connect knowledge with practice, to connect knowledge with collectives. For example, theater is always a collective work. I can't do theater alone. I can only do theater with other people, so I have to create a group. And of course, I will ask myself, which kind of group and how does this group function that it produces new knowledge to describe the world and to change the world? And this is the question you have to ask yourself for a movement, for a party, for a whole society. How can you create a society that is a new collective that kind of can process the questions of our time? Because the civilization we are living in can't process the problem. We can't connect with what we know. We know since like 40 years that capitalism will bring us to the apocalypse, but we don't change it. So we can't connect, and not because we are bad or because we are stupid, because we are all good and we are all quite intelligent, but we don't find ways of kind of processing what we know. We can't, and this is what, uh, what, what art can do, showing in small, let's say, projects, how this can work, how this knowledge can be produced, how solidarity, for example, practically works. So in a certain sense, um, we should think uh, um, in a new form of art, and, and in that case of theater, and it to uh, new political context as well. It was uh, uh, there was an interruption in the in the in the. Uh, I didn't get it. I, you have to well, repeat the question. It was a technical problem. Yeah, I, I, sometimes I lost your voice. Um, I yeah. was saying that um, following your, uh, following what you just uh, said, uh, we should re, uh, rethink, uh, try to readapt um, a new form of theater, of art to the new political context. That could be I mean, we, we should try a combination, how to do that. Yeah, I think I would even go uh, w one step further, because I think the theater is not reflecting a, a, a reality of society. Theater is creating a reality of society, you know? Of course, one part is reflection, another part is representation, but for me, the, the most important part is the utopic part of theater. Even if it's tragic, if the message is very dark, even then, theater shows you ways of change, ways of changing, ways of connecting, ways of acting, actually. Theater is action. Theater is symbolic action and real action. I, I, I give you an example. We did this, uh, yeah. this, this film in, 
this Jesus film in, in, in Matera, in the south of Italy, uh, last year. Because I'm just like, like now I'm editing the film, we are finishing the editing. And um, um, I was, I was uh, uh, when we are, we are doing the film, I was asking myself, but how can the message, the words of the New Testament being translated into t- 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 today? Who would be Jesus? Who would play this actor? What would he really do, you know? And these are theatrical questions. Who is this actor? Who is talking these words? In which context the word of the Bible or of, uh, of a Greek tragedy or of Chekhov or whatever, or of your love story, in which context does it make sense, you know? And yes. then you search for the context. And for example, you find it in the camps of the refugees in the south of Italy. And you say, okay, Jesus would go there today. And I don't mean it in a, in a moral, ethical way. I mean it in a very practical way, that it makes sense to play the Bible. Because normally to make a Bible film is the most absurd thing you can do. It's just shit. But if you find a context that makes sense, which is not the ancient Rome or the ancient Jerusalem, but it's today, where have to you to go? And these are theatrical questions, this kind of translating. So what would he do? what would be the outcome for example the regularization of the people of the immigrants in italy in whole europe so what is the political meaning of the bible that the last one will be the first one what does he actually mean when he's revolting against the first global empire rome what what does it mean today in europe to do this you know and this is intellectually it's not difficult it's not difficult but you have to do it you have to try it out you have really to to stage it, and the staging itself changes the context in which you stage it. You know what I mean? Yes, I mean, um, what I I understood is that you are trying to transform the concept in real action to your jobs and your works and your projects. That's true, that's true. You know, (laughs) this can be in uh, concerning the context or concerning the country or the time you are working in, can be very difficult, different. If, for example, in Tehran you are staging Chekhov, it can be a revolutionary act to have this kind of small bourgeois drama about emotions in Tehran. When you do it in Paris, it's an act of conservatism, you know? So you can't, there are no rules in it. You know, the context changes the message completely. And the message, and this is for me important, changes the context, of course, you know? So if you do, uh, uh, I don't know, a political speech in a parliament, it's very different from doing a political speech in a theater. Perhaps in a theater, it's just like losing its sense completely. But in the other way around, it gets its sense. Or if you say, I don't know, the context I need is not existing, then you create a tribunal, you create a party. This is a theatrical act. Democracy was not existing, and some people just said, like 1789, they said, let's create a parliament. And the king said, yeah, but the French king, Louis XIV, said, Louis XVI said, but guys, who are you? And they said, we just do it. We become what we are uh, through the actions we do, you know? So it's kind of creating the future you need yourself. Yeah. I, I was, uh, uh, while I was listening to you, uh, I was uh, thinking that uh, um, we all agree that uh, we felt we miss a, a common uh, strategy, strategy to face this pandemic crisis at European level. And that in all issues, in all topics, everything. So now, following the game we started, if you could make uh, uh, just imagine for a few minutes if you could make a decree, a law in support of, of art and theater at European level, what would you do tomorrow? I would immediately introduce the general basic income. It's, it's, it's quite simple. The, 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 the general basic income is for me the next step we have to do, especially in the art sector, to disconnect capital and art. Because if we don't disconnect it, we have to continue to produce like crazy just to produce to sell. And if we don't step out of this circle, 
we can't break the circle without breaking the circle. And for me, okay, there's the revolution, of course, there's the revolution, but for the moment, if tomorrow I could do it, it would be the general basic income, because it breaks the circle. And I think this is kind of really, really, really the next step. Yes, still, still totally agree. Uh, you know, Yanis Varoufakis invites us to uh, reimagine uh, the world differently, uh, to rethink another now. Uh, and that's the effort we all uh, should do, but we also, uh, let me say, we must do. Uh, and it's not so easy like we can imagine, because I think this is a kind of exercise that we are all already start doing it, but you know, it's quite complex. Um, in, in that direction, um, what do you imagine uh, for the next incoming future? I mean, in, in what, from here, in, in one year? So nothing too too long. Sorry, in in, in what concern? I mean, uh, I imagine in 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 which uh, in which part of I mean in in the arts or in the. Uh... Yes, yes, no, uh, uh, for sure. Following uh, what we 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 were saying, I mean, you just uh, talk uh, about. Uh, uh, I ask you. What uh, would you do tomorrow with your degree uh, uh, what yeah. in order to um, following this uh, uh, um, reason um, in order to imagine uh, rethink and another now and following in that direction, what could we add more? Yeah, I think again, the first thing is that we have to search for other contexts and other other circles of production because um, we are bound to, let's say, the methods we are using to produce. For example, I'm the leader of a city theater in, in Belgium, uh, the Entechen. So it's a theater and how this theater functions and how the rules of the theater are by law is that we have to fill the theater every year at minimum 80% every evening. So we have three halls, one big hall, a smaller hall, a smaller hall, and we have to fill these halls. And this is the rule. And if we step away from that rule, it gets problematic, you know? And this is only one, one example of what I do, because I just have this framework as a theater director, and I have to fill in this framework the whole time, and my whole team has to fill in into this framework that we don't break the framework. So I think everybody understands that the first thing we have to do is to break the framework. That we are not bound to kind of making every season again the puzzle. So let's do a Shakespeare, let's do an activist project, let's do a line of discussions, plus a live stream, plus, you know, some new plays, a bit of avant-garde, and then you have the frame is full of the bourgeois theater and whoop, and you make the next puzzle for the next season and the same in all parts of our society. So I think we have first to, to, to really break these frameworks, that there is no 80%. There is no rooms to be filled, you know? There is kind of a search for your public in other spaces with completely other tools in other frameworks. And I think this is the next step that we say, for example, for me, this, this crisis was very interesting to rethink uh, globalization in the sector of art. Because at the moment, globalization means that I don't know, uh, you can see the same place <laughs> in all parts of the world. That you would go to Rome, or you would go to, to Tokyo, or you would go to New York, and you have the same 10 names. Huh? So one is, uh, you don't know, you have always one director from Iran, you have one director from Central Europe, one from South Europe, one from the US, then you have a Latin American choreographer, and these are always the same people being in the same festivals that you break this, that you re become somehow more local and more global at the same time. So we said, let's do one exercise. And we decided to make a book called Why Theater? Why Theater? And asking these questions to 100 makers from all generations and all countries of the world. So really to say, let's find out who could we ask in Mexico? 
who could we ask in Cambodia, who could we, etc. I didn't know anything about the Mexican theater, you know. I had no, I had no idea. Of course, I knew that, etc. But to really, really make a basic research, but what is existing, and the same in economical logic, in ecological logic, you know, in all parts of what this, because on this planet, we have people, we have, I don't know, everywhere, and we know everything. We have alternatives for everything. We have little cities, little communities that tried out everything. We can really connect this knowledge, and we should really stop to invade with this. I mean, we are always talking about how can we change the European Union through the logic of parties. And perhaps the logic of European Union and parties is just not the right one. And there are 50 other logics to, to make it the same for theater. We decided in bourgeois theater that there is a stage, there is a, there is a public, there is a kind of a, of a little distance in between of it. On the stage, you would adapt a classic in the language of your city. And that's what you do, actually. I'm talking about 90% of theater. So how can you do it differently? How can you be uh, inspired by different ways of making theaters? Perhaps from the past, perhaps not invented yet, perhaps from the politics, perhaps from other cultures. And I think this is the moment to really recollect our knowledge, to to bring our heads together with other heads that have a complete different way of thinking. I give you, I give you an example. Yeah, please. When, uh, <laughs> I was forced to come back to Europe. I was rehearsing Antigone together with uh, an actress uh, called Kaisara from uh, North uh, Brazil, an indigenous actress. So her mother tongue is Tucano. So that, that's a kind of a, of a, of a let's say a language that is existing since, since thousands and thousands of years and still exists, but what is a beautiful fact. And then we decided she will have a speech. So I talked with her a lot when we were there. So I, I wrote down a bit notes, what she said, I sent her the notes, then she changed the notes, she sent it back, I changed a bit, I sent it back, because we couldn't, we, we could only talk like this. So then we did this. And then in the end, she was translating it into Tucano, and that's a language where the concept of thinking is completely different. So you don't have the way of talking about future and past and present. The word capitalism, the word society, etc., is not existing. So you have to describe it differently. And by translating this text in her language and translating it back, it became a completely new text, you know? And then I started to understand what, for example, capitalism really is, because when you translate it in that direction, in that direction, like what the future is, what is talking about the past, etc. So by translation, I started to understand that the concepts I had were too simple, just too simple, too simple to understand it, you know? And uh, I, 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 I had this experience that this kind of exchange uh, is really interesting that we shouldn't just collect. I mean, of course, when I'm when we are talking together, that's really interesting. But our backgrounds are more or less the same in the end of the day. You know, I guess you're an academic from Italy, and I'm a kind of an academic from <laughs> from from Germany. And then we we talk to each other and we we uh, we connect. Uh, but when you would talk to somebody who is kind of an extreme opposite, even of you, very different. You could talk to somebody who is like, perhaps even not human, perhaps lived 5,000 years ago, you know, like in the theory of Donna Haraway, when you have animals and humans and things becoming new species. I mean, this all sounds a bit science fiction, but this is the way how we have to create knowledge, how to think a completely other way of thinking. And it's so interesting, everything you are just saying, that please, if we, we as DM25, we all want to be involved in all this process together with you. We should cooperate more and more and more. Absolutely. 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 Now, uh, time is running out uh, quickly, and I have a lot of questions that people okay. want to ask you. So. I leave my own questions <laughs> and try to collect some 
uh, let me say uh, Giorgio uh, ah he probably saw uh, the Trans Europa Festival in Palermo because he wrote me uh, freedom of movement uh, uh, of movement is a human right uh, ask Milo if he uh, feel treating it by the current situation and how he can face it. What we can answer to George? Yeah, I think everybody understands that there are uh, strong movements now uh, in Europe to uh, what they call regularization of the, of the immigrants. Because there is, of course, an economical reason, let's say, in the south of Italy to delegalize to criminalize like hundred thousands of people to then exploit them for the, for example, on the tomato fields, you know? Yeah. And I think we can only break the criminality of all this kind of how these enterprises work and how our societies work when we first make the step into, uh, let's say, adopting the laws of our own European Union, you know? Because we have following the laws of European Union, it is impossible to illegally enter Europe as a migrant. It's just impossible. This is following the law. It's not, it's just impossible, you know? So that's the invention of, of populism. It's just a kind of an invention and through media, we started to believe in it. And we even started to construct like Frontex, etc., to construct even extremely expensive organizations to kind of criminalize ourselves. And I mean, besides the fact that economically it's disastrous, it costs so much money, and especially it costs the lives of all these people, so it makes no sense. And I think, first of all, we just should be realists and say, let's adapt the democratic and constitutional laws in Europe. And that's what every citizen, it's even not important if you are liberal or left or, or right wing or conservative or whatever, this is just let's not continue to break the laws let's fulfill it as jesus <laughs> says in the gospel of matthew so it's kind of just like let's fulfill the constitutions that we have so this is a very simple rule because if we don't do it we will stay the slaves of the big enterprises because these laws are made not only to protect immigrants it's also made to protect us it's made to protect democracy so i think this is really like it's so simple huh? And I think there is now a big movement thanks to COVID-19 because people is afraid. People think if we don't protect them, uh, they will get sick and we will get sick too, etc., etc. So it's perhaps for selfish reasons that this whole process of regularization started. But we should now push on it and finish this. I think the refugee crisis, the migrants, all these questions, that's kind of one really central problem of the European mind or of the European mindset of the how we understand I don't know our democracies or the concept of European and I think this is this is really the first step we have to do and I said how do I think about the the, the, the freedom of moving and uh, and and etc so this we should now con let's say start immediately to do it yeah. as it is as it is written in the law once more, totally agree. Um, let me see Loredana. Uh, Loredana just wrote me. White and black, uh, about colors, white and black uh, uh, seem uh, to be uh, Milo's favorite colors, looking at his job, work, projects. Does it mean that you don't have gray in your life? <laughs> that I don't do I have what in my life? Gray? Yeah, Loredana is simply asking if you, uh, in your vision, in your life, or your way of working, I mean, it seems only black or white and not gray. What you should ask her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's somehow true. Is it I, true? I... Is it true? <laughs> I, you know, you know. I mean, I think on an intellectual side, I think my 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 my, my works are extremely uh, colorful and, and and difficult to understand and even contradictory, because I don't believe in a black and white, good and bad model. But at the same time, I think 
For example, you remember when I went to Congo. So everybody told me, Milo, this is a post-conflict zone. There is no war any, anymore. It's peace. And I was kind of witnessing massacres here and there and all the time. They said, but why do you call it post-conflict zone when you are in the middle of an economical conflict? Why is capitalism denying the war that it is making against humanity? And I think it's true that you should show this war or these antagonisms you are in. You should show that there is a way to make it better or to make it, you know, to even understand what we are living in. So, of course, you can, can but on the other hand, I mean, in the detail of my work, um, I was editing today the Jesus film, for example, the character of Jesus, he's a very complex character, he's narcissistic, he's a very good leader, but sometimes he's completely confused. I mean, I think uh, he's a, a very great personality, you know, sometimes he's black, sometimes he's white, but he's not good and not bad, he's kind of, kind. he's confused like everybody, and I think it's important to understand that, I mean, your, your, your will uh, to change shouldn't change your sensitivity as a as a human being that things are immensely complex and for me one of the beautiful things of doing art is to be very very complex actually to put in it a lot of different colors and a lot of meanings that when people is coming out of um, of, of our real shows I'm not talking about political actions like, for example, the one in Palermo, but when we do our, our real shows, people come out and says, okay, okay, aha, uh -huh. I'm somehow happy, but I'm also depressed. It was beautiful, but it was also horrible, you know? It was very humane and it was very violent. So what actually is it? And I say, that's art. You don't, you don't, I can't tell you, nobody knows, you know? And I think there is gray is a beautiful color. <laughs> I mean, we all are too much complex and uh, um, it's quite difficult, I agree, to say, I mean, it's not a question of black or white or grey, because in my opinion it's still uh, violet and, uh, and green and, and whatever. We, 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 uh, we are too much a combination of different things, I mean, and nothing then today is like that. Um, before leaving uh, us, please, let me ask you, uh, because I'm really very, very curious about your school of resistance. I mean, I read in um, some newspapers that you are approaching a work together with Bandana Shina and uh, Vanessa Nakete, uh, they um, have been, uh, both of them are our guests uh, yeah. in the <laughs> last week as well. So uh, it's not a coincidence, I mean, it's a point of karma. Uh, today you are with us too. So yeah. please, uh, tell me, tell us more about the School of Resistance. I mean, the School of Resistance is a, is a, is a, is a, is a think tank that we wanted to create a bi-weekly uh, live stream think tank where we invite people to share their knowledge and to have a discussion with them. For example, the first live stream we did, it started a week ago on Saturday for the opening of the Vienna Festival. So we invited an activist from the Amazon and an artist, Daniel Bruguera, it was Kaisara and Daniel Bruguera from, from Cuba. It was very difficult to make a connection and they were discussing with myself and with the curator Lara Starr. So we were kind of trying to find out exactly what we discussed today, but what, uh, how does the new art we need now look like? What kind of knowledge and of, of space uh, of, of liberation is this art creating and how, you know? What do we need now? And not only you in Italy or I in, uh, here in Berlin, but the people in Amazonia and the people in India and the people in Europe together. What is the global art we need? And in the next week, on Thursday, we invited Vanessa and uh, Vandana to discuss with us uh, these kind of, 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 of questions, either not about art, of course, but about activism, about sustainability, about agriculture, about climate. And we always try to bring together knowledge from different 
uh, places and continents and traditions of thinking in one edition, you know? So there is not only myself, so I'm only the host, I'm actually you in this live stream, I'm talking uh, with that people, and uh, I'm trying to find out, but what, when we talk together, what can it be more than just talking and listening and asking and responding, but having a dialogue that in the end of the lesson of the School of Resistance, each one of us would know more than he knew before. So in our own struggle, because then we disconnect and we have our own struggle again. But what can we find out when a global school of resistance, all the specialists of, of resistance actually against capitalism, climate change, uh, injustice, come together and exchange? It, it sounds great. Please let us update it on that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You have to share. You have to share the link, and I will follow your uh, your live stream <laughs> as much as I can. I consider invited. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot. Uh, well, Milo, uh, really thanks for having been with us tonight. It was, it was a big pleasure. It was and a big pleasure. No, my pleasure. Really, my big, big pleasure. And uh, uh, really, I'm looking forward to update our conversation. And I hope that we can also, like BM25, cooperate because I really feel that we are on the same. Uh, how can I say? <laughs> on this level, yes. <laughs> uh, we are the exactly same project, no? Ex exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot. And thanks, thanks a lot. everybody for being with us tonight. Thank it was you very a much. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Ciao, Patricia. Ciao, Milo. Ciao.